Morning guys. So let me show you what I do for my morning practice. Every single day when I wake up, I might get a cup of coffee or drink a little cacao or just have nothing. But right after I wake up, I go right into my flow practice. So this is my flow training. This is what I actually do every single morning. And I do this, it's a combination of basically um, to make the body strong, it's cardiovascular, it's making the body very flexible, make, making it feel really light and loose. And the reason I do this is so this way I can access flow state throughout the day, basically being very, very present by allowing the body to feel very strong while at the same time feeling really loose, getting rid of all the stress. So I always feel good throughout the day. And if my body feels good through the day, my mind can think good through the day. So this practice is going to be uh, something that you can follow along with me on. It's going to be three, it's going to be four different segments. It's going to be a segment uh, first, something that's light and loose. It's a Qigong type of practice. It has slapping, it has a massage, it has a lot of movement, energetic grounding, things like that. Then we go into uh, some plyometrics, you know, using body weight exercises, building some muscle, building some strength. Then we go into a yoga, more stretching, slower, flexibility, increasing range of motion. Then I finish off with some meditation along with some breath work. So hope you enjoy, follow along with me. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the timer here. So I just use a little basic timer to kind of help me keep track of time. Okay. So let's start off with hops. And so hops is good because loosens up the entire body. I like to drop my shoulders down like this. So sometimes if I ever carry stress here in the shoulders, tightness here, I simply drop it down. And this will help relieve stress in the shoulders, in the arms, in the chest, in the legs. You want to be as loose as possible. Make it as easy as possible. If it's too much, you can always just do this. You know, if your calves get sore or if it's just a, a lot of activity to get used to, even doing this is fine. The idea with this practice is that it's your practice. I can show you my version of this practice. Full body tap is next. So, but it's modified. It can be modified for anybody. So what I'm showing you doing now right now is called a full body tap. So in Qigong, they do this a lot. And really, so our body is filled with different pressure points and nerves and they're all connected. And so when we're tapping like this, we're basically stimulating a lot of the organs, a lot of the nerves, different internal systems in the body. Creating good blood flow, keeping the body elastic, so this way blood can flow through there, nutrients can flow, energy can flow, chi can flow. And the, the, uh, the amount of impact that you're doing is entirely up to you, you know? It's entirely up to you. If you feel like you want you want to go super hard, cool. If you feel like you want to go really light, awesome. Right? Whatever works, and it changes from day to day. Some days your body is feeling really strong, and you're just kind of pounding away, right? Really tapping it out. And some days your body feels really tender, maybe because you're sore or body's just uh, you know there's a lot of moving parts. So. Just go a little lighter. It doesn't really matter. You know, for me, I do the same thing. Today, my body is kind of so-so, right? It's not like super, super strong, but it's not really tender. It's kind of the middle. So I'm giving it a medium break here, right? And do wherever you can reach. If you can't reach it, you don't need to do it. <laughs> you know, your range of motion will increase over time. So I like this one here also, you know? And this is my, one of my favorite is getting the head. There are so many nerve endings here in the head. 
and again, you know, for me, I like to give it a good impact. But I've also been doing this for years now, so my body has grown accustomed to this amount of pressure. And then now, this next one, I'm going through some longevity exercises. I'm charging up the chi in my hands, which is energy. Then I go up and down about seven times, up and down the nose, opening up the passageways for breath, allowing air to pass through. Then I go around my eyes, the direction of the eyebrows, to go ahead and massage the muscle around the eyes. I charge it up in between. Then I do rotations around the ears. About seven times, both directions. And just pressing down. Charge it back up. Then I press on the nose seven times, both directions. About, you know, it does, as I'm talking here, it's hard for me to kind of count, but I do it every morning. So seven to 10, doesn't really matter. There's no magic number, you know, just whatever you feel. Then I go into my pressure point. Hold for about three seconds. Three, two, one, release. Three, two, one, release. Right here, okay? It's a lot of pressure points throughout the entire body, you know, where energy meets. And I'll just do these two here. One is right here in that dip under the nose. And just, just something really quick here. I'll usually hold for about three, two, one. Then eye rotation, look up and I rotate around one, all the way around two, three, four, five, six, seven. Other direction. You see, we use our eyes all the time, just like everything else. Our eyes is actually one of the most important organs that we have, but we don't do enough eye exercises and there are so many. And you know, I don't have time to go and do all eye exercises every single day. So then I just do a little rotation here. It helps, you know. So keeps the eye muscle strong. Ton, same thing. Go into the top, in behind the lip, and then go into a circle. Ton, and just go all the way around with pressure. Hmm. Okay. I do about seven times both directions. So if you're wondering like, oh, why is it doing the ton? Our muscles, when we go like that, we use our jaw muscles, our ton muscles, and all of these things. And it's really, really important because we're using it all the time. So we need to release stress. There's tension built up in the jaw a lot. Next thing I do is look up and down, inhale through the nose, and exhale through the mouth like this. And I do about 12 times. Inhale. At the way round. So I'll hold my breath, you know, after that last 12th one, then I do the rotations. And if you can hold your breath throughout the entire time, great, you're able to build a lot of pressure here, loosen everything out. If you need to inhale, no big deal. So now, now I'm done with all that. I loosen the wrist. Because we can remember, we carry stress everywhere. So we want to keep everything as loose as possible. Now that I go into drop down arms, So it's just about keeping the body really loose, you know? You don't want to be tight because the goal is to relax the body, to teach the body how to let go. 
If you notice, I got a little bounced. When I drop my arms down, I will exhale through my nose. And I tend to, you know, go with a good amount of force because my body's used to it. This is what I call the heart opener. Good to expand the chest, release tension around the chest area, loosen up the shoulders, give a little massage as I'm tapping the back of my shoulders, my rear delts. And again, I would do an exhale when I close in and an inhale when I open up. So it looks like this. And again, if you don't have to go super wide, when I first started, I was doing about this. You know, and I couldn't do it that long either. So just do whatever is comfortable. And over time, my body got used to it. And my joints became very, very loose. Muscles became very loose and relaxed. This is called a twist. This is probably the favorite. One of my favorites. I got a couple that are my favorite. So this one is keeping your arms like jelly and you're just simply turning your body and letting your arms flap and they'll massage areas as it hits the body. And again, you can go very light, you know, take it really easy or you can do it harder. Just depends on what feels good for you. This is about feeling good. Don't force your body, don't strain your body. You can push your body, but don't strain it. And also, in the back, this is also massaging my kidney. And, see? So, this next one here is hip circles. So when I first started, I would just do circles or just left and right. And this is to loosen up the hips. This is to keep our hip, hip muscles and hip joints very loose. So this way we have mobility. Too many people as they get older, they, they lose mobility in their hips. And so for me, I go with really big circles. So this way, as, he, as I start to do this more often, my hips become very, very loose, and I wasn't able to do this as much before. But now, the whole entire hip is getting loose. The knees is getting loose. Also, my ankles are able to distribute pressure all the way around. So this way we're able to strengthen all the joints and keep everything really loose at the same time strong and loose. And then we go the other direction. Yeah. And again, there's no correct or wrong way, right way to do this. You know, you can flop around like a standing fish. You can do little ones. You can kind of just feel like, well, this kind of feels good. This is what I'm comfortable with. Go ahead and do the, do the merengue, <laughs> you know? It doesn't matter. It's just about whatever feels good for you, you know? There's no correct way how to do this. This is taken from a lot of different types of practices. So there's no right way, wrong way. I'm just giving you an example of what I do and what I found works really well for my body. And everybody's body is a little different. So next I go into a kidney bounce. So I put the back of my wrist on my kidney area and I simply just bounce, see? And then when I, once I get the bouncing down, all I have to do is just move my hand 
move my wrist just a little bit, and I'm able to give myself a massage. And as it moves down, I can massage my lower back. So if my lower back is ever tense, this will massage it, make it feel real good. So I get massages like every day, <laughs> every morning. Self-love, baby. So, another thing I do after that, I put my hand on my side, now I'm massaging my side. You know? And I press, press my fingers in, now I'm massaging my intestines a little. Moving food that may be in there, cleaning it out. Our intestines do a lot of work. It's good to keep it clean. So now, I go into backward arms. So this move got my shoulders to be really strong and really mobile. I've been bodybuilding for over 20 years and put a lot of strain on my shoulders, heavy bench presses and all this stuff. And I never had really good range in my shoulders. They were decent, but not really good. And building a lot of muscle did not help with mobility and keeping it loose. So when I first started doing these, I was only able to do about 10 to 20 at a time. And I wasn't able to do this range either. I was doing about like this. And now, and at that speed, and now I can just do this without pain, without injury. And so if you're trying this and you feel, it feels like it's kind of pushing your limit, you know, go smaller circles, whatever is comfortable for you. This is your practice. And it's okay for all of us to do it a little differently. Our bodies will adapt to what we do. So if you do this every morning, like I do, your body will be able to adapt to these things. So now this is one, charging up the energy. Raising my hand up, getting the energy to go up and down my spine using that hoo sound to drive the energy up from my stomach. To the second section now, which is the strength training. So now we're just gonna do just the basic body weight movements that allow our body to function, pushing, pulling, running, jumping, kicking, Striking, <laughs> all these things. <sighs> so, if you need a rest, just rest. Yeah, if you can keep going, go. If you want to modify, you can do it on your knees. You can do it off a counter. You can do different, different types: push-ups, pull-ups, or prone cobras. So. For you guys that may not have a pull-up bar, or the pull-ups are a little tough for you, you can do pro cobras. 
which I'll do a few. I'll show you some right now. Gives me an excuse to rest. So, these are prone cobras. When I don't have a pull-up bar, I use these as a substitute. Dips. So, come around here. So, I like to use corner of counters. So, you can also use chairs. So, you can always grab some chairs. And now, you still got this. And you can even do them like this. See my feet's resting on the ground, but it's okay. Just makes it easier. Next, handstand push-ups or pike. So, go against the wall. Another alternative is doing pike, pike push-ups. So next, we have uh, squats. So anytime you need a rest, you just rest. Days I'm feeling strong, I push it. Just push it through. Days I'm feeling weak, I'm resting like half the time, you know. Just always do the best you can. Always do the best you can. Don't worry about it. If someone is stronger than you, doesn't matter. Or hell, if you were stronger the day before, and now today you're a little weaker, who cares? Life is not about competition, you know? I used to think in that way. Now I realize, simply just doing the best I can is always good enough. Don't need to be constantly trying to beat goals and all that stuff. If it happens naturally, great. Do I have the intention for it? Sure. But I don't need to fixate on it so much. I find that naturally, my body becomes stronger. Just by doing more practice, just by being consistent. I don't have to try to, try to shoot. I don't have to try to beat goals. I don't have to try to, to get better. It, I naturally get better. We as people naturally get better because our body is adapting to these movements we're doing. So it just naturally becomes easier. We can't stop the body <laughs> from getting stronger. Leg raises.
Whew. So, if you don't have a bar, you can always do leg raises on the ground. So next, run in place. Runnings are one of our most basic functions to move. And plus it's so good for us. All the issues about bad for your joints, it's because they got weak joints, because you're training wrong. When you train this way, you strengthen your joints, your ligaments. You learn how to move differently. More explanation on that in another video. Kicks. So this is not for the sake of training to fight. This is not for the sake of going into an MMA match. Think about this as just simply a movement that is very natural to your body. You're kicking. You're extending your legs out with force. You know, whatever one you want to do, there's no, you know, there's no uh, certain one is the best. Because again, this isn't training to fight. However, if you were to go and take classes, if you were to learn proper ways to kick, proper ways to do all that, you already have a lot of the foundation down, just in your body's ability to move and kick, you know? So they try to change this and that, it would help you progress faster. Next one is strikes, same thing. Yes, I can make my punch, you know, more very, uh, you know, very skillful. And it's not the point, you know. Okay, yeah, whatever you feel like doing. Sometimes I just go to town and just swings, you know, strikes. Sometimes I strike this way. Sometimes I left and right, right, little jabs. Sometimes I I do this motion. Right, you know, just, it doesn't matter. You see, when you think too much about what you're doing, you can't be training in the present moment. You're in, we're in the mind. We're always thinking, is this right? Is this wrong? How should I do this? And all these thinking takes us out of the moment. So jokes. Also, little jumps, little hops, or, <laughs> or big hops. <sighs> Plank. <sighs> By the time I get to here, this is what my plank looks like. <laughs> See, it's not about perfect form and just do the best you can. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. So I might do this half the time, you know, and nobody's looking, I'll be doing this. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you can, you know.
second round. 자, now I'm feeling it now. It has only been 12 minutes. But when you're doing your best to keep going, resting only when you need to. I just keep moving the best I can. Clear the mind. Just be present. Pull-ups or front cobra. So, let's see, I do a little underhand here. Dips. Another type of dips I like to do is like this. Feel the blood in my eyes. <laughs> uh, modification. Uh, pike. Uh, 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 okay. Squats. When I'm feeling strong, I do a little jumping squats. Even the range of squats is up to you. If you can't go all the way down, no big deal. Come to here, you know? Whatever you can do comfortably, your body will adapt. You will get stronger. Just keep at it. And your body will naturally get stronger by itself. You don't have to worry about that. Oh. 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 
And sometimes I'll do this. I'll modify if I get really tired. I'll show you a couple other variations of what I do. So if this becomes really tiring, this helps. And on your waist, this helps. And also, I like to do these, what I call these little ninja lunges. You know, like a ninja crawling around, you know? Just trains your legs differently. Why don't float your boat? Leg raises. That's all I got on those. I'll finish off with some leg raises on the ground. Right in place. And if you're not used to kicking, a good modification is simply training to get the knees up so you start to train your hips until it becomes more comfortable to do a full kick. And I also suggest Not kicking so hard. So now, just gonna do some elbows. This is what I like to do. So I'm gonna show you guys just a few things that I do. And usually what I'll do is I'll do the same thing throughout that whole minute. Again, don't worry about whether that's the correct form for martial arts or anything. Look at it as simply as moving your body. I'm not here to teach you the correct form on fighting jumps. I'm here just get our bodies moving. 
by doing the most basic movements. Plank. start to slow down my breath. Now we're done with, with section two. Now we go into flexibility and relaxation. So eyes closed, grab your toes or your ankles or your knee. Start to slow down the mind. Start calming the breath. Start connecting with that feeling inside the body, the subtle energy, the sensation. Push your body, but don't strain it. The more your body can let go, the less stress we hold. The less stress we hold, the less tight it is. And the more we're able to do stretch and increase our range of motion. So I have an injury here that's uh, stopping me from being able to go all the way down. So I simply just go here, no big deal. But again, let's relax the body. If you feel pain, take it back, take it back more. Be more easy. You wanna be able to push your body, but you don't wanna feel pain. You want your body to stretch, but you don't want to strain. The practice here is to practice letting the body go. Let's come to the center, right hand stretch. So, another thing is people often look for perfection in form. They look for the absolute correct way to do something. Because there's this idea that if we don't move correctly, that we will be injured, that our bodies may get messed up. That's not true. If you can move in the correct way, you can still get injured. It's all based on what your body can do. It's all based on the condition of your body. And so when you're doing these stretches or when you're doing any of these practices with me, come up to the center, go on to your left side. You just do the best you can. Have fun. 
enjoy the practice. Don't worry about perfection. Can we make our uh, form even better? Absolutely. I've been training for 25 years. So if we were talking about going into proper form and then everything, yes, we can do that. But I'm just sharing with you, this is what I do. I don't aim for proper form. I just simply stretch and relax. You know, can I go and keep my toes up, and align and align and align? Yes, I could. But I don't have to do it every morning like that. I can simply just relax. Because even this is good enough. And this might feel a little more enjoyable than the proper everything. Side bend to your right. So your right hand reaches over to the left inner thigh first. And then you put your elbows down here so you can kind of help yourself get to the side. Left hand reaches over to the right foot, right ankle, right knee, or simply just right floor. And point your left armpit towards the sky for a deeper stretch. So you want to tense only what is needed for the movement, for the stretch. or what they call in yoga, for this asana, this movement. We want to relax everything else. Because remember the goal here is to teach the body how to relax, how to let go. And the way we teach the body how to do that is simply by doing it. The more often our bodies get used to letting go, when our bodies get used to relaxing, let's go to the other side, we become more familiar with that state because we become more used to it. And then we're able to do it throughout the day. You know, when we run into some situation, some event that usually would cause us some stress, somebody says something to us that offends us, but now we're able to let the stress go on command right then and there. Maybe we did it in five seconds. Maybe it took us five minutes. But the point is, we can let it go and not let it affect our day. Not let it affect the way we think, affect our energy, affect how we are to another person or how we see a certain event. We let it go right away and everything's good again. Everything's back to normal. And so when we do this practice, we're teaching our body to get used to letting things go. Pigeon, right leg bent, left leg straight. And when we're constantly letting go in our body, our body feels really loose. Our body feels very light, doesn't feel very dense, very light. Our body feels at ease, it feels so calm. It doesn't have like that, that undercurrent of uncomfortable. You know, that undercurrent current of like unease that makes it to where it's really tough to sit still, you know. We get rid of all that and our body is just always calm and it feels good. And I fall asleep sometimes in the pigeon. <laughs> all right. And so when we do this, another thing, um, another thing I want to mention, I do the same practice every morning. I don't change it up. Rarely, I do always look for ways to, um, to progress, to evolve, find ways to make it easier, you know, make it easier to learn, make it easier, make it have a flow more, make it more effective for relaxation something that can make me stronger, but also easy. And so I'm constantly evolving it. But for the most part, I do the same thing every morning. There is no plateau and things like that. And I'll tell you why. Not because plateaus don't exist. It's because 
always doing the best I can. Spinal twist. And when I, nat when I do this practice every morning, my body naturally gets stronger. And when my body gets stronger, the movements I do become more difficult. I can maybe do something that's a little more difficult than what I was doing months ago. Maybe I can do more repetition because my endurance is better, or my, or my strength is more, so I can do more of something else. And so naturally, I'm progressing. Maybe I don't rest at all. <laughs> maybe those planks I was doing earlier are straight as a board, not with my butt way up in the air, like I'm doing a downward dog or something, you know? Maybe my jumps can be a little higher. You know, whatever it is, there's plenty of room to progress. So therefore, I won't worry about hitting plateaus. But what I find is really enjoyable is that by doing the same practice every morning, I get to get the results that I want, but I don't have to think about what to do. And I get really good at doing these movements. And when somebody gets really good at doing movements, it becomes easy to do. And when it's easy to do, we become consistent at doing it because we like to do it. We like to do things that feel easy for us. And when we're consistent, well, you know, we get results. And so there are lots of movements out there, you know, double knee to chest, wrap arms around elbows, chin pointing to knee, try to keep knees together, feet together. So your spine can be flat. My arms are kind of sweaty, so I can just do one. I'll grab my legs. So, but there's a lot of movements out there, and plenty of good ones, and ones that are even more effective, even more um, badass. <laughs> but I found that these movements that I do every morning are by far the simplest movements. Main Shavasana, which is basically lay down on your back and relax. We'll do this for 10 seconds. They're the simplest, they're the easiest to learn. It fits for all fitness levels. Go into a plow. Knees together, feet together, toes pointed to your head. And again, this could be difficult for many people, and there are many modifications. You can use your hands here, and you, you don't have to come up as far. You can even do this, you know, you can just bend your knees, just anything. I mean, even if even if you're just doing this, you know, doing this is fine too. Just whatever you can do, whatever you can do, just do the best you can. So after that, I lie here for about a minute. Just let my body relax even more and I connect connect to the energy, connect to the vibration that's inside the body. By doing so, it would increase the mind and body connection. And when that connection increases, my ability to feel increases, my ability to sense if one part of my body is very, very strong or very, very weak. My ability to be able to control my anatomic nervous system. So now we're gonna go into deep breaths. So in through the mouth, out through the mouth. We're gonna do this for two minutes. 
This is to increase oxygen throughout all of our cells, all of our body. And when we increase the oxygen there, we bring more consciousness to the entire body. Let's begin. Take a last deep breath. Exhale everything. Hold your breath. Without inhaling. Hold your breath as long as you can. Relax your entire body. Clear your mind completely. Connect to the inside of your body. You can even find a point in front of you with your eyes closed. And focus on that point if it helps keep your mind still. And when you need to breathe in, breathe in through your mouth. A deep, deep breath. then afterwards hold as long as you can. So at this part of the practice, you're holding as long as you can on the inhale and on the exhale. So let's say I have to breathe in now on my exhale. I'm going to take a deep breath through my mouth. Hold. And do it as long as I can. And then when I need to exhale, Exhale all of my breath. Do it as slow as possible. And then I do 20 deep inhales like I did earlier. And then go through the process again. Exhale, hold. Inhale, hold. 20 deep inhales. Exhale, hold. Inhale, hold. 20 deep inhales. So go ahead and continue this. While I go ahead and walk you through. 20 deep inhales, exhale all of your breath and hold. And then when you need to breathe in, inhale all of your breath and hold. Doing this is a very powerful practice to help you silence your mind, helping you become very present and allowing your body to let go of all stress and tension in your body and also allow you to connect to the energy that subtle inner sensation that's inside the body years ago when i practiced this i could not connect to it but over time the connection starts to build and before you know it you're able to connect to it all the time you could be having a conversation with somebody 
and you're connected to the energy inside your body. And when every time when we're connected to the energy of the body, we're able to let go on command any stress and tension and anxiety and anxiousness and worries. We're able to let it go. We're able to let it go the moment it arises. The moment that an event that could be causing these things to happen, we let it go. And when we let it go, our bodies return back into the natural state of calmness, of relaxation, our natural state of harmony, which is how our body is supposed to feel. Always at ease, always relaxed. We tense when we need to tense. We run when we need to run. We use the body for what we need. But when we don't need to tense the body anymore, our bodies get to relax. And only through relaxation can our body truly recover. The deeper that we can relax our body, the deeper our recovery is, the more we can let our muscles recover, let our muscles rest, let our organs rest, let our digestive systems rest, which is why intermediate fasting is becoming so popular. People are starting to realize we don't need seven to nine meals a day, like I used to. <laughs> so now when you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, let's go ahead and slowly make your way up into a seated position. I like to get into a half lotus. You can get into any position that's comfortable for you. And I like to take a moment usually you now to just appreciate my body. Take a moment to be thankful. Thankful for my body. Because without my body, I can't live thankful for all the experience, all the wonderful times that I have in my life. Thankful that I have four limbs. Thankful for my ability to breathe, ability to move. And also to be familiar and to connect to this nice calm, relaxed feeling that's in my body that I feel every time after I practice. And to know that every time I practice, I become more familiar with this feeling of calmness, of relaxation, my body's natural state of being. And the more often I feel this state, the more familiar I become of it. And the more familiar I become of this state, the more often I can feel this state. And I feel this state a lot now throughout the day. And it's wonderful. So now whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Just take a minute to look around or just relax.
Try not to go back into checking your phone or um, rushing into something. Oh, give yourself a minute, you know, maybe two minutes, however long, however long you feel, or maybe just however long you have. Because this time is for you. For me, this is my morning practice. This is what I do every morning to start my day off. And the way that I start my day is often the way that I can finish my day also. And often the way I feel throughout my day. Calm, focused, a sense of clarity, a sense of peace and this blissful, joyful feeling. And so I'd like to give myself just a few minutes And uh, you know, thanks for joining me today in my practice. I do this every morning, but there are days where my body's really tired or maybe I didn't get enough sleep and I may do a shorter practice. That's perfectly fine. I cut down the time that I'm doing each movement. I may only do half of the movements, or there's days where I just don't do anything at all. And it's okay, you know. Let's listen to our body, and let's start connecting to our body. And if our body's telling us we need a break, then let's take a break. So, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.